What is a TL smoother and will it actually help your Ender 3? We'll test it on today's Filament Friday. This episode of Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. So what are TL smoothers and do you need them? Well, it comes down to this. It depends. It depends on your printer, it depends on what circuit board it's using, it depends on how it's designed, and it depends on what you're printing. I haven't seen a lot of issues with my prints, but in my last video, when I printed those benches, I saw lines on the cabin and salmon skin on the side. And that's an indication that you could use a TL smoother. So what is a TL smoother and what does it do? It's basically just a series of diodes that go between your stepper drivers and your stepper motors. You see, the steppers are micro-stepped. As I explained in my previous video, there's variable voltage on the coils so you can get multiple steps or micro-steps in between your natural steps to your stepper motor. And it's these micro-steps that give us the resolution and a lot better printing. But, as it turns out, on some drivers and some circuit boards, when you get to the max on one coil and a minimum on the other, the minimum can actually give you a little spike. And that's just the nature of the stepper driver and how it's driven. If you have a very good circuit board, like I know the Prusa doesn't require this, they're using Trinamic, and with feedback, they really don't have this issue. But in older machines and the low-cost machines, it tends to show up. And so that little spike needs to be blocked, and that's what TL smoothers do. There's a four-dialed version, and that'll block any spike that's 0.7 volts or less. And the 8 dialed version blocks anything 1.4 volts or less. So basically, what it's doing is stopping any current from flowing in this lower coil until the voltage is at a level that's acceptable. So instead of seeing the spike, it just lowers it to nothing. So you get a lot closer to what the steps should be. What I want to do is just put them on my machine and see if I see a difference in these benches. So let me show you how to install them, and then we'll test it out. These are the TL smoothers that I chose to use. They're eight dialed versions. They come in a pack of three for $12 and include the wiring harnesses. I'll put a link to these in the description below. I'm only gonna install these on the X and Y steppers and I'm gonna use double-sided foam tape to hold them in place inside where the circuit board is on the Ender 3. So I installed the foam tape, two strips, and I made sure I covered the soldered pins on these boards, on the back of these boards. That way I can mount them and they're insulated from any kind of shorts. Plus double-sided foam tape will hold it real easily. The boards only have one harness to install and you can put it in either connector. It doesn't matter. These boards can go either direction. So put one harness in each board and then we're ready to install it inside the printer. Now I need to get to the circuit board on the under three and that requires three screws. Two in the front and then you turn it around, slide the bed forward and then there's one on the back right here. After those three screws are out, I can lift the cover off and now I can get access to the wiring harness. I just pulled off the Y axis wiring harness and I plugged it right into the TL smoother. And it only goes in one direction. And then I plugged the harness that came on the TL smoother into the Y board connector. Once that's in place, now I can mount the board here on the side just by peeling off the double sided tape. So I'll just peel that off and then I'll just squeeze this in place. Now it's gonna block some vent holes, but it shouldn't be a problem. There's plenty of places for air to leak out. I made sure to mount it low enough so I could put the cover back on and not hit it. The next step was to do the X-axis. So I pulled the X-axis connector, put it in the TL smoother, pulled off the double-sided tape. This one there was a little less room and I had to fight the LCD cable. But once I got that in place, I squished it into its position. It held, and then all I needed to do was connect the TL smoother cable to the X connector on the circuit board. And that's it. It's all connected. So let me give you a close up here of the finished design. As you can see, we got the two boards, the X and the Y wiring. And here's the direction it'll come from the board through the TL smoother and then out to the stepper for the X and Y axis. And the proof is in the print. So here's the TL smoother version on the left non-TL smoother on the right and if I zoom here you can see the diagonal lines on the cabin on the non-TL smoother and it's smooth on the TL smoother so clearly it made a difference here but what about the salmon skin you can see the salmon skin on the non-TL smoother and it's smooth on the TL smoother so it worked next I tried Matter Hacker's test print fill a mint 
TL smoothers on the left, no TL smoother on the right. I thought the face mask might look different between the two, but they both look great. This is a great print, and I can't tell them apart. But that means the TL smoothers didn't hurt the print either, but it definitely helped improve the Benchy. So based on this simple test, these TL smoothers actually helped my prints, at least in the X and Y direction. The Z, I'm still not sold you need it on the Z. I need to do more testing. If you use the magic numbers where you're going up full steps anyway, I really don't see it as a problem. Even if you stop on one of these blips, you'll get the same blip all the way up. So I really don't see it as a problem on Z, but I'll try it. But for this test, I knew X and Y were the problem on the Benchies, and that's what I eliminated the problem by using the TL smoothers. Now, I prefer the 8 diode version because that gives you the full 1.4 voltage block. Maybe somebody wants to use a 0.7, but I recommend the 8 diode version. And for the $12 I paid for these, I think it was, to me it's well worth it. That's an upgrade I highly recommend and very easy to install. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon's one way, or just use the affiliate links in the description below. They're both very appreciated. And if nothing else, click on that Chip logo and let YouTube know you like what you see and you want to see more. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.